our talker today is a GitHub ambassador. He's part of the GNOME eng engagement team, and he's an IoT researcher at the Ministry of Science and Technology of Brazil. He's going to talk today on design of a new XK IoT integration in GNOME. Please welcome Claudio Santoro. Okay. So what is IoT? Let's just think a little about that. It's something that can make you live easier. It's integrating things with other things. It's automating your life. It's making things have decision making and decision making. It's pattern and behavior analysis of everything that is around you. It's prevention of catastrophes. Maybe Skynet, I hope not. Uh, and whatever you want, according to I2EA. So yeah, that's IoT. So what do you think that IoT or Internet of Things actually is? It's like, hey Siri, turn on my TV. And Siri says, sorry, I can't find any Apple TV device on your network. No, that's not IoT. That's just Apple bullcrap, like we serve here happening today. So what it actually should be in your personal life and Internet of Things integration, it's like, hey Google, good morning. Hey Claudio, you welcome back. I'm adjusting the thermostat to 25 degrees Celsius and also turn on your bedroom lamps. The way of your work is 20 minutes and whatever you also configured it to do. So only that? Really? No. Those are examples of just home automation. So the Internet of Things also is home automation, but isn't just that. So what are real world examples of IoT alongside home automation, industry automation, and whatever automation? IoT code likely is image light and gas smoke sensor in order to collect data about temperature, fire zones, and everything like from a forest. Uh, is machine learning and artificial intelligence to predict when these fires could happen? And is actors to create decision action knowledge to prevent or mitigate those problems? Like an example, <coughs> using this exactly scenario. We have some sensors, some, I don't know, Production sensors because I think Arduino won't work in a forest. So we have a ship produ produced in a real world example in Amazonia. So a lot of sensors actually that are just glowed in the the trees in the Amazonia forest. They have light and a lot of different sensors and a lot of drones travel uh, above the and check what is happening and when some sensor says well maybe the, it's having a fire here but how these sensors actually have that uh, got to that conclusion isn't just saying ah the temperature from 20 Celsius degrees apparently from two minutes it's now 60 or 40 uh, Celsius degrees no it's a lot more than that it's a combination of what these sensors actually are seeing and also of what the machine learning or algorithm be behind that it's thinking because we could have a hardware failure. So a sensor say, oh, here yeah, it's really hot, but your other sensors in a node just says, no, it's okay. So what it could be, it's a hardware failure or just a fire starting in that moment, just in that tree. So it's a lot of things, actually. So Skynet, performance IoT is just synonymous for Skynet. A lot of people actually give joke of that. Like people, people really like to give jokes, but actually, differently from what on that case Skynet is, uh, an IoT system isn't literally devices making decision making on their own, but it's the creating solution for preventing things happen, but differently, humans do the decision, and humans know what is happening, and humans can interfere, or just say, I don't want you to do that at all. 
So the actors from an Internet of Things system should never go al alone a decision making because they could be wrong and also make the, a bad decision. So a really big world example of what is coming is the Google Duplex. I think everyone maybe saw here in Google I.O. 2018. It was really cool, but you don't really actually know what Google is talking with the other person in the side of the phone. So okay, uh, they show two examples of demos, but actually in the real world that we run in the background, so you will not know what is really happening and what that Google artificial intelligence decided for you. And if it that would be what you really wanted to be decided. So what we doing actually here? Okay, why are you talking about uh, internet things in a GNOME conference? Yeah, uh, well it could be a better place to talk about internet rather than a GNOME conference where everyone from open source and a lot of companies that work with internet things maybe are here. Like uh, computers, phones, and a lot of devices that everyone is reading here or using here, actually in my opinion on IoT devices but because they have a lot of sensors in case of notebooks, they have only heat sensors, but they have also Bluetooth and a lot of other communication devices that could just integrate between a network. So Linux is open, yeah, IT is open, so that's a match. So GNOME is the most used and most popular and most famous desktop environment for Linux, yeah. Uh, platforms already do IoT integration like Windows, Android, iOS, yeah, Mac OS, even Chrome OS. So come on, folks, why are we not doing it? Even Canonical is doing it. So I don't know if someone of Canonical is here. But okay. Uh, so what should be exactly this IoT integration, and who will be benefit from that? For the developers, okay, that will be literally a nightmare to develop because it's really complex, depending on in which middleware, on in which layer of GNOME you, know, you want to put that, and for which purposes, it could be a really nightmare for us to create this. But when it will be done, yeah, that will be really cool for the end users. Because a lot of people that also use GNOME, you know, that's based environments, gestures like Ubuntu, CentOS, Red Hat, and that goes on. Are and users and are developers, so they think, "Wow, that's cool! Why I don't just collaborate on things and contribute and make this even greater?" Because we have a really huge amount of companies that are creating IoT things. So could we do it? <coughs> yes, and the benefits would be amazing. Like uh, use a hagnom after get inside KDE. I'm just just kidding. Uh, for our side, uh, we could integrate many different platforms in Gram at glance, like. GNOME I did. I'm just kidding. But uh, being serious now, GNOME is a project with many upstream platforms like GDK. So creating a toolkit framework for OAX, OI, with IoT for GNOME, like <coughs> just a wrapper for calling Google Home, maybe, or just a platform that you could integrate any other sub platform for Internet of Things on it. So how it would be coded? In the GKT layer, in GNOME 12, a flat pack, an independent framework, API, Node.js, Viola, I don't know. So what we could integrate at GNOME <coughs> with the uh, Internet of Things, which protocols, which softwares, which platforms. I think someone here maybe have heard of MKTT, of ZigBee, XB, Wi-Fi, of course, Bluetooth, Six Open. There's a lot of platforms from hardware layer, software layer, that are a lot used in Internet of Things. Maybe everyone here already know about Philips Hue, that smart lamps that you can control with voice because it's integrated with Alexa, Google Home, and many others, or just with their own application. Actually, you can even create your own application because they have a developer's reference because, yeah, Philips who just is playing Zigbee protocol and not someone like Apple puts a lot of crap on on the top of Bluetooth protocol and yeah, for Apple Watch and those things. 
So yeah, and what's our edge doing? Samsung, Apple, IBM, Canonical, Google, and even Android. So a lot of companies and projects are literally doing it. And a really good example of Um, all right. Here we go. Someone's trying to me not watch my talk today. I don't know. Maybe Skynet. Yeah. Uh, so a really go cool example of a platform that creates integrations is IFTTT. If ten, 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 I don't know. So I think someone here also knows IFTTT. It's not easy only for Internet of Things, but also for creating some schedules for you or combination of applications to do some things when you want to do something. Likely, ah, good morning, so send a Slack message for your work group. I'm arriving at 10 a.m. or whatever you want, actually. So we could use all these platforms just to create amazing things at GNOME. So what are you waiting? Literally, a world new world is waiting for us. We could do everything that we want, but the big question is, is this important for us? Or someone will in the future do it? Why GNOME Foundation should do it? Or GNOME developers or contributors? And why? And for who and how? These are a lot of questions. And I'm not going to answer them here, maybe. If you ask, I will try, because there are a lot of technical stuff behind it. So it's basically that. So anyone has any questions? Yeah. Hey, hey, excuse my ignorance. What is it that you're trying to achieve now? I, I totally miss what you're proposing or not proposing. Actually, I'm not proposing anything. I'm just talking about an uh, area that is a lot focused right now on the world of developers and that it's really cool. And I think that GNOME should uh, matter in doing that. But what, voice, voice commands or? No, like I said, Internet of Things is using voice commands. So the deal is what we should do. Just an application for integration, Google Assistant on GNOME, or a platform that uses code develop applications for Internet of Things at GNOME and also use this thing to be used in many other platforms or just in other gestures. So we need to think because these are really big questions for me. What I'm trying to represent here is may more a question and not a solution to rethink if it's an important what we are do, trying to do, how we will do, and for who. Basically, a lot of questions I'm asking here, just for reflecting and thinking. OK. Yeah. Macros. No. Well, never, never hit it actually, but yeah, I could search it after. Could you explain a little about it, if you want? Google Assistant or Cortana of everything. So yo, we also could integrate this. Never heard of it before actually. So uh, actually, someone actually tr created it. That's cool. Yeah, it's basically that, guys. It's really a short talk, uh, on my opinion. But okay. <laughs>